Hi everyone! This is today's project, a sticker with a custom design that you designed yourself. Want to find out how? Stick around! Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Susan with Blue Vinyl Stickers and today I am going to be showing you how to create the background design that uh, you see in the uh, sticker uh, in my opening credits. So uh, we're going to do a little paperwork here and I'm going to thank everybody, sincerely thank everybody of my new subscribers for subscribing to my channel. I really do appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed yet, please uh, click below and subscribe and like this channel. So I'm going to tell you, just as I tell everyone, uh, this is version 4.2, blah, blah, blah. This is the business edition of the Silhouette software. Now, we are going to create a uh, unique background, uh, one that maybe only you have. Um, if you'd like to uh, start a business with selling backgrounds for Silhouette software, this would be a good way to start. Uh, there's so many options uh, It's and so many things that you can do. Um, it is uh, quite a large field if you'd like to get into it. So. If you would like to go ahead and get yourself a paper and pencil and your imagination, uh, we will go ahead and get started. So today we are going to use just a couple of shapes from the uh, flexi screen panel. So I am going to choose uh, this little flower. So I'm going to click on it. It'll give me the crosshairs. I click on my screen and it brings up the slider bar and the uh, the design. And then I'm going to come over here and let's put with it, what should we put with it? Let's put a star. Okay. So let me tell you what you're actually seeing here on the screen. These are flexi shapes. And what happens is you have a slider bar in the middle and it will tell you how many blades around the outside edge you are going to have. So right now, it says I have seven. I don't want seven. I want a classic star. So here is uh, a classic star with five of them. Now I can bring the star shape in. I can bring the star shape out to the uh, as far as the, the dot has gone. Or I can bring them in. So I want my star to be about like that. Now, if you notice, you have a circle here, and this one allows you to do fine adjustments. Now, we can adjust later by using the uh, adjustment box or the, uh, the handle here, but this one will give you fine adjustments. Say you only want to adjust it just a touch, but still have it in this square, okay? You can do that uh, by here, you can do that, but what'll happen, you see the square, moves okay this adjusts your design inside the square so take that into consideration when you're doing your designing so i want to make this uh star i want to make it fit inside whoops i want to make it fit inside this four by four grid now this four by four grid let's go ahead and set that up real quick click on your page settings click on your grid, uh, say show grid, but uncheck snap to grid. Your snap to grid should be off uh, normally. You want your spacing at one inch and your divisions at uh, one. So this is what I want my star to look like. We're going to do the same thing over here with the flower. Um, actually, I like the seven uh, petals of the flower. And um, I want that flower to be more uh, upright. So I kind of align these two here, make it kind of upright and say that's it. Now I'm going to actually shrink it down a little bit, put it in that, that square and um, say good. Now, 
Right now, they are still an adjustable pattern. I want to create a path or a regular design, take off any chance that I would happen to uh, move things and ruin my design. So I'm going to right mouse click and say convert to path. Same thing, right mouse click. Make that a little bit bigger. And say convert to path. And so now I have two shapes that the only thing I can do with them now to adjust them is use the uh, handles on the box. Okay. So I want to, well, first of all, let's go ahead and make this one blue. And we're going to make this one a lighter blue. Now let's make it a green. Okay. I am going to start with this one and I want this one in each one of these uh, center four. So I'm going to come over here to my replicate and go one, two, three, four, because I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I need two more. Highlight it and I'm going to just use my arrow key and kind of put that right there in that center. You see the, the petal is right there in the center and here it's right in the center. Now I'm going to highlight them all, come to my transform window and say align vertically, which they already are. If they weren't, if they weren't aligned vertically, you click that and it puts them vertically. Now you're going to say uh, do the horizontal spacing and this spaces them out how I'd like them. Now I'd like them back up in the middle of that uh, red box. But there's too many of them. Okay. So I want that box. Let's take out this guy. That box, that box, that box, that box. Now it's spaced a little bit better. Highlight them, space them, align them. Now, I want this star to be in between each one of these clouds. So, again, place it where I want it, highlight it, come to the replicate window, and do five replicates. Because you had one, two, three, four, five, six here. So if you drop one, you can have five. So we're going to center this one in that square this one in this square and do the same procedure again. Highlight them, align them vertically, space them horizontally. Okay, now I am going to, and I didn't group them yet, so watch this. I'm going to take these, see, I highlight them, now they act as one group. I am going to put these where they are right here. Highlight everything, and since it's all grouped, each one of these is its own design. I am going to space them horizontally. You see, it moved it over just a titch. Okay, and I am going to group them. Now, this will be my repeat for my design. So, I want to highlight them, and I want this repeat to go all the way down my screen. And I am going to say replicate, replicate, and um, it's spaced a little bit far from me. So I want to take and move it up a little bit. Highlight it. And this time I want to align the center. Make sure I have it in the center where it was before. And it aligns that way. Right mouse click. Group. And we're going to do the same thing again. Highlight it and replicate it once. And there we go. And it's going to get moved up a little bit. Highlight it. Whoops. I'm going to highlight it. I got a couple steps ahead of myself. And we're going to say ungroup. And we're going to say ungroup. And see, it's got a little bit of a space down here. I want, I want to fill this in. So let's see if another cloud will fit down there. 
and no, it's a little big. So I want to take my stars, right mouse click and say group. The stars, right mouse click and say group. Right mouse click, group. Right mouse click, group. Right mouse click, group. And that was just my cat talking to me. And we're going to group each line. And this is just part of the design process, getting things adjusted where you want them. So I'm going to take this one, use my arrow keys, and I'm just going to pull it down. And I'm going to use my arrow keys and push it up just a little bit. Now, since all of these are grouped, each line is basically considered a design. So I'm going to highlight it. And as you can see, it puts a box around each one of them. Come over here to my vertical spacing and it spaces it out perfectly. And just because I'm going to align the centers, just because I know they're already aligned, but it's just a double check. So this basically is going to be my design. Uh, and so I'm going to highlight it all, right mouse click and group it because I don't want anything to move. So I will show you now, I need to put a background because if I just save it like this, then there will be, uh, it's just on a white background, on a, basically on a transparent background. It will basically look like this when you go to put it into a design. If that's what you want, perfect. Then you can stop right now. But if you'd like a color that these to sit on, then uh, we'll go ahead and add that color. So right now I'm going to say center and center and it puts everything back in the center of our work surface. Now we've got to make sure that this is a 12 by 12 uh, design because if you do not have a 12 by 12 design and you put say a just a design in the middle and save it, when we go to put that into a fill of the uh, monogram we're going to be using, it will have that white space showing. And there's no way because that white space is now considered part of the design. So we want to fill in everything that's here. The easiest way to do that is to draw a box. So I'm just going to draw a box and just draw it off to the side for the moment. Highlight it and we are going to use our uh, dimensions key and we're going to say 12, enter, and we're going to say 12, enter. And we're going to say control all. And you see it highlights everything. Just let the machine do the work for you. We're going to center it and center it. And everything is all centered. Now, this is the key part. Highlight the outside ring there. And I will make it a little bit bigger so you can actually see uh, the outside ring and see what I'm doing. You do not have to do this step. This is just so you can see that there is an outside ring. Now you see, this is my square. This is my box. Okay, that I just drew around here. This is my box. So I'm going to highlight it, and I am going to make it. Oh, let's just make it a light color. Okay, and as you see, what happens is that the color is now on top of our designs. That's because the box was drawn after I drew the other designs. So the way to fix this is we right mouse click on it and we say send it to back. And because I had everything highlighted, all of my designs are the same color. So if that happens, this is how you fix this. It's called the undo button. So undo, undo, undo. And here is our, let's do this again. Undo, 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 undo. Okay. Because what I had done is when I selected it, I selected everything. So select your outside ring. And if it helps, set it off to the side. Highlight it, make it the color that you would like. 
right mouse click on it, say send to the back, and then highlight everything and put it back together. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's in the same spot or it's not in the same spot, uh, as long as you put it back together. Now, as you can see, there are lines uh, around the uh, design here. I don't want those designs, and we will figure out a way later in the design process how to get rid of those, or you can highlight them now and turn them clear. It doesn't matter. Um, I will show you when we go to cut how to fix that. So you don't need to worry about that right now. So right now we have a um, design that we are going to save as a JPEG. If you were going to sell this commercially, then you would want to go ahead and take these design, these black lines off. So highlight them, come up here and say off. And this is your design. Okay. So I'm going to save this. Now I need to save this to a folder on my hard drive. Do not save it to your uh, library. Uh, it won't save to your library. It will save to your library as a studio file. We need this to save as a JPEG. We need this to be a picture. Okay, so we're going to say file, save as, and save it to your hard drive. Now, hopefully you have a folder that you've been saving things to. This is just a blank folder that I've been uh, created just for you. And I am going to say save as a JPEG. You don't save it as a PNG. That's too big of a file, and there's no reason for a transparent background. We just need it to save as a JPEG. And we are going to save this as flowers and, and stars. Okay, and say OK. When this window pops up, just leave it as it is. Leave it as a default. That's just fine for our purposes today. And say save. And now, if you only have one screen, then what you want to do is go ahead and minimize your window so you have two screens on your window at the same time. Okay, now here is our folder uh, that we saved our design to. Um, so you want to go ahead and make sure you pull that folder up so you can actually see the design uh, in JPEG format. You want to click on library and you want to go all the way down to where it says patterns. In your patterns, right mouse click, say new folder and create yourself a new folder. Okay. And name it anything you want. This one we're going to save, you know, I've already created abstract, so we're not going to save another folder. I don't need another folder. So I'm going to right mouse click and delete that folder. And I'm going to come up here to the folder that I created, or you can put it in any folder that you want. As you can see, I have other uh, folders that I have created with other designs. Now, just a side note, the more designs you put in here, the more space you will use. Okay, designs, uh, if you are running out of space in your library, the biggest space hog of anything you will find in your library is going to be your JPEG pictures. So uh, if you have no space left and a ton of uh, pictures here, just delete them because they are already on your hard drive. So you don't need them here and your hard drive at the same time if your library is out of space. But since I've got plenty of space here, we're going to go ahead and save this to new as for as abstract. I can talk. Thank you. This is a simple drag and drop. If you've never done that, come over here to your design, left mouse click, click and hold and drag. And when it gets over to your software, it will highlight the folder. Lift your finger. It'll queue it up. And there it is. It is now in our design software. Now, to use this particular design, we need to come over here to our palette. Okay, but are you, we'll come over here to our palette and we'll click on fill. 
come on, there we go. We click on our fill. And this is where all these designs, that's how you get all these designs into this area. We're going to scroll down until we find that. And there is our design. So now that you have your JPEG design that's completely yours, let's use it. You can do a couple of things. You can draw anything you want on the top, print it all out, and just have it cut and it will cut various parts and pieces. But I want to uh, put it into a letter. So I'm going to go to my library, and as you saw before, I'm gonna pull up a letter. And I am gonna call it, or I'm gonna call it, uh, let's just use uh, a B for blue vinyl stickers. And I'm gonna say open. Here is my letter. Now, my letter is already a studio design, so make sure that your uh, file that you open is a studio design. That means that it is a design that you can edit. So I want to fill this design with this um, pattern here. So click on it, come over here to your design and click on it. And there is your design. Now, you can come down here to Advanced Options, and you can play with the scale of your design. Uh, you can make it really big. You can make it really small. Um, whatever you'd like, I'll just leave it at 100%. And this is going to be my design that I print out. All right. As you can see, I have a different screen up in front of me. After creating the rest of the uh, design as I was heading, I noticed I had some major flaws in the instructions. And so I went ahead and deleted everything and we are gonna start from that point forward. So you saw me uh, put the design into uh, the letter here. So that's where we're gonna uh, continue. So I'm gonna click on uh, the design and I'm gonna say, now it is still two parts. Okay, so I am going to make sure that I am clicking on the filled in portion of the design. And you saw that little bit uh, there. That is a glitch that is in this version of the software, but you just click out and click back and uh, the edit points go away. So I am going to click on the palette again. We're going to do a little bit more work here on the palette side. Um, click on advanced options. And then I am going to go to pan the pattern because you see down here, there is absolutely nothing but that uh, very light background that I put there. So I'm going to click pan the pattern and it gives me the little uh, cross in the circle and that allows me to move the design anywhere I want. So I want to make sure that I do have some color down in that uh, bottom bar. And I don't want it to be partially, to look like it, it's uh, partially cut off there. So I wanted a different color. So I just want to make sure that these are uh, here centered on the backbone of the bee. And I do have something down here on this bottom portion here. So pan the pattern. And go ahead and adjust it. And that looks pretty good to me. Now. What I need to do is I had printed this out and uh, because there was no border around it, uh, as in border around this portion of the design, it just uh, got lost in the whole um, in the whole design. So what I need to do is to put a border around the um, design portion. So I'm going to highlight it again and if I remember saying right, I don't remember if I said this or not, if you do not so assign a uh, weight, as in a, a point weight to a line, it will not print. Uh, so the uh, computer and the, the software will recognize this line as a cut line. But if you do not assign a weight to it or a point value to it, it will not uh, print. So your printer will not see it. So I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to assign it a uh, point value of 2. 
because that gives it a nice um, a nice outline. So I am also going to change the line color and I want it to match what is in the design. So I am going to click on the eyedropper and I am going to pick the blue here. And that makes the outline color blue. So let's let's click on the green and see what the green looks like. No, I like it as blue better. So we're going to leave it as blue. So now when it prints, it will print with this outline on it. Um, I may want that a little darker. So when you click on this and look down in here, if you have clicked on something, it will put a box around the color that has been chosen. So it has chosen the darkest color that I can put on here. Um, if I choose another color, no, it just doesn't work. So I need to stick with the uh, green, or excuse me, the blue that I have chosen. So let's go up to three points and see what it happens. Ah, there we go. All right, it puts enough of a weight around it that it adds enough of a color around it. So I think that would be a good design to have. So if you want to really see it without the lines, you can uh, take the grid and turn the grid off or you can just place this over onto the white side and this is what your design will look like when it is printed out. To me, that looks very nice. So I'm going to highlight these both, put them back together and I'm going to say group. Now I want to print this out and I want to print it out at four inches high. So I'm going to come over here to my transform window, lock the aspect ratio, highlight and put four. And that's going to give me a four inch sticker. Now where the four inches is coming from is going to be from this blue line here to this blue line here. Okay, not the top of the pattern and the pattern, but the top of the sticker to the top of the sticker is where it's measuring the four inches. Now, I forgot to mention, you need to make this line here for the cutout for the sticker. You need to make that a totally different color than it is for the inside of the decal, or excuse me, the sticker in this point. So ours is blue. So, and the inside is a totally different color. So that will be great. And you'll see why here in just a minute. So I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna rotate it to the side because I want to uh, use as little paper as I can. So I need to turn on my registration marks now. So we're gonna come up here to the page setup window. And we have already set up our screen to be the current printer, which is if you have a printer uh, hooked up to your computer system, this is what it will default to is your current printer. And that one, if you want to find out what your current printer is, all you have to do is come up here and say file print. And it will tell you right there what printer you have uh, hooked up. So if I wanted it to go to uh, my uh, Dymo labelers or I wanted it to go to my brother, then I would go ahead and choose one of those, then come back over here, refresh the screen, and it would make sure that it went to one of those. So we want to make sure it's on portrait. Let me see if I can get it to highlight here. And uh, because your paper goes in short ways first, not long ways. So you want to make sure it's in portrait uh, version or portrait low, uh, orientation. Then you come up here to your registration marks and you want to turn them on. Choose type 1. The only time you would use type 2 is if you have one of the original silhouette cutting machines and um, or if you are sending this to your SD card. Now you want to uh, always choose type 1 and it puts the registration marks up here. Now we're going to work down this screen and don't be afraid to open up and click on things. You cannot hurt a single thing here. The length is 0.75. Well, I like to make it as big as possible. OK, 
okay? Because I want to make sure that the sensors on my uh, cutting head actually do see these black marks. I also want to make the thickness as dark and as thick as I can. Also to give it the uh, best ability to uh, see those lines and make sure everything is correct. Now, I want to go ahead and click on Advanced Options. If you've never done that, this is what is here. Okay? And like I said, you cannot hurt anything. There's nothing you can't do that by clicking Restore Defaults won't undo. Okay? Um, so if I click Restore Defaults, watch what happens up here. Okay? It puts it right back to the factory settings so you can start over fresh. So let's put this back over where it belongs. Okay, now the um, inset is how far in these lines go. And the further in they go, the less uh, area you have to print with. So if you're printing a whole page of designs, you will lose a good inch worth of um, sticker paper. And as you well know, sticker paper is expensive. So you want to be able to use as much of it as possible. So I am going to take my inset and I am going to put that as far out as I can get it. Okay. Now I could put it so it's in here. So I move this down here and everything is right there. No, 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 no. We want it as far out as we can get it. This pushes it as far out and I can even make it go, um, further. Nope, that's as far as it's going to go. It is 0.394. Okay, that's as far out as it's going to go. And if you um, have clicked over here and have show uh, cut border and print border, I'll tell you what these are. Here is your print border. You see that gray line? Click on there. Watch that. Okay, that is where you have to print on uh, this sheet of paper. Your printer will print inside those gray lines. So if you happen to have something that's like right over here, it will cut that off. It won't print past that line. So uh, now you want to have this show the cut border. Now the same thing is if you put a design over here and you put it out as far as you can get it, it will cut, it will stop cutting at that line. And we don't want that. So you need to stay in that red line. So having these two checked uh, is a good thing. Uh, right now we don't need a print bleed because we don't need, we're not doing anything that is a kiss cut. We are doing a sticker without a kiss cut. So we do not need to put the print bleed on. We're going to come back over here to the uh, registration marks and the advanced options. And I'm going to put this up here and I am going to take my uh, right insert and I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to bring it in right about there. Now you don't want to place your design in the hash marks so make it as close as possible and that's that's pretty good right there. Now the bottom insert take it and put it all the way up and then use your arrow mark ar arrows. Just keep clicking and it will bring it up. Okay if you hold it it will automatically be up at the top and you'll just have to click down. So just click, click, click and you're, you'll be fine. Okay. So as you see right here, let me turn off the grid so you can actually see it. Okay. This is what uh, your cut area is. And you, as you can see, you're inside of it here, you're inside of it there. Everything is perfect. So at this point in time, you can go ahead and print this design. So let me go ahead and actually print this design for you and I will show you uh, this design being cut. So, okay, I have loaded my printer and I'm going to come up here and say File, Print. And hopefully you already have your preferences set for what your printer likes for the type of sticker paper you are using. Since there are so many printers on the market, uh, every printer is different. I use two printers. I use a Brother and I use an Epson. They are both totally different on their preferences. You just have to test and play and find out what preference uh, is the best for your printer. And then just go ahead and continue to use that. So now that we have our preferences set, we're just going to go ahead and click print. 
All right, and it should print over here in my printer real quickly. And hopefully I can insert a picture of what just printed out of my printer. So give me just a moment. I will be right back. All right, I went ahead and did the printout and uh, took a picture. And here is what the actual uh, printout looks like with the uh, registration marks and everything put into it. So now that you have this, you need to actually send this over to your uh, Silhouette machine to cut it. So what we have is this, and we need to go to our Send button. And as you see, everything here is highlighted. That is because we need to switch over here to Line. Okay. If you've never switched over to Line before, all it does is it gives you the uh, colors of each outline. Now you remember that we went over here to Line and uh, we assigned a couple of different colors. The outside was blue, the inside was the light turquoise. So when we send over to the set, go over to the Send button and to the Line uh, tab, then uh, we have the two line colors that we can um, we can choose. Now if I went to fill, again it would go ahead and select the outside line and it would cut everything that is red here. And we don't want to do that and we're not cutting in layers yet. Um, so this one is simply going to line and we are going to turn off the blue line. Okay, do you see that blue line? It turned on, it turned off. Okay, so right now when I send this over to the machine to cut, all it will cut is just that blue line. Now for uh, material settings, you can scroll down to the uh, sticker setting that is in your uh, settings here. Go ahead and scroll down to uh, stickers and you say sticker paper and it, you've got sticker paper clear, uh, sticker paper white. Okay, if I cut on sticker paper white, this particular setting will cut all the way through my paper and into my mat. So this is something I definitely do not want to do. So I want to put my blade back to one. I want to put my speed at like five because it doesn't need to go excessively fast. And I am going to put my force at nine. Now, and with just one pass is fine. Now, you need to experiment with your machine. I use a Cameo 3 and uh, with the Auto Blade. You need to experiment with your machine and uh, figure out what the best setting is for yours. Um, it has taken me quite a while to figure out what the best setting is for mine. And when I change brands of sticker paper, or um, I change, even if I change to a new blade, I have to go through the procedure again. I have to do a test to see which um, setting works the best. For me, this one with the current blade setup that I have works the best. So at this point in time, I am gonna go ahead and load the um, sticker paper onto a cutting mat in the upper left hand corner and I'm going to put it into my machine and uh, set it to cut. So I'll be back in just a moment. All right and here is where I left you off and this is the uh, printed uh, design on the sticker paper. I went ahead and placed it onto the um, clear silhouette cutting mat and you can see I didn't get it real straight but that's what the registration marks are for. Um, they are there to ensure that the cut is straight. Here's the back side uh, just to show you that it is lined up on those outside lines. It's not overlapping, um, it's not far away, it needs to be up in that corner as close as you can get it. Like I said uh, with this one here I missed it by just a little bit, but that's perfectly okay. Here is the sticker after it is cut out, and this is the sticker I believe uh, I will be using for the uh, 
front intro. So this you've already seen. Um, this is showing you my score lines. As I said before, you need to set up your machine uh, however you want to. If you want to cut all the way through this back sticker paper, then you do need to increase the pressure and the depth of your knife. Uh, you just don't want to go through and cut all the way into your mat. Um, but as you see, I have mine set up so where it just scores the uh, background. And if it just scores the background, it will release from the backing um, very nicely. Here is the finished decal, excuse me, sticker as it is put into a uh, journal. I hope you have enjoyed uh, this uh, tutorial. And if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. If you would like to see me uh, do another tutorial on something, I'm open for any suggestions on anything that you'd like me to show you. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.